Hi everyone, it's Neef here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we are going to be doing a section on why I art journal. And um, for those of you who have followed my channel for a while know the answer to this, but I art journal basically for three reasons. The first is to have fun, to relax. The second is to um, practice using all my amazing art products that I have and just you know try different techniques and see if things work but the third reason that I art journal and probably the most important is I art journal for my mental health and um, I, I, I do that to keep myself regulated when I don't create in my studio no matter what I'm doing I find that um, I just don't feel well and I don't cope with things as well as I should be coping with them and it gets to a stage that even my husband will say I think you need to go and get painty um, he, he knows that you know if I go more than a few days without painting or doing something that I need to go and regulate I need to go and make sure that you know everything's okay and get stuff out now most of the time when I'm using my art journals I'm not journaling about what's troubling me, I'm just having fun and playing and creating. And just that, um, you know, problem solving and having fun on the page is, is just what I need. It's that time for me. Um, and I'm sure many of you relate to the fact that, you know, if you're busy working or, you know, looking after kids, you don't have very much time for you. And I found when I first had my, um, my oldest child four years ago that, you know, while I was feeding her and so on, I would be sitting on the couch um, feeding her or she'd be asleep. And, you know, when she finally went to bed, I'd just sort of sit there like a zombie because I just couldn't move. I was so exhausted. But I wasn't um, getting anything out of it I was feeling really unproductive even though I was helping my body rest and it's what I obviously needed to do I was feeling really unproductive by forcing myself to go into my studio and create something I'd come away from that time feeling that I'd actually achieved something and you know it was time for me it was time for me to just unpack unwind not think, not over, you know, analyze what's been going on the day, just to be. But I'd walk out of the studio at the end of the night, whether I'd spent 15 minutes or two hours, coming out going, oh, I did something. And I actually had something physical to show that I had created something. Um, and, you know, lots of people do that in different ways. They may be knitting, they may be reading a book, you know, all sorts of things. For me, it's using my art journal. So that's, that's sort of where I come from it. Um, in most cases, as I said, you know, I'm not doing anything groundbreaking. It's just creating and having fun and playing with um, things that I have in my, my studio or new products. But in some cases, I, um, you know, need to journal my feelings. So those pages tend to be really text heavy or, you know, have quotes on them that I need to tell myself. The other sort of things that I do are pages like this um, which is what I sort of call my mic making for well-being. There are pages that I know I need to do something but I don't really have an idea and I'm not really bothered by anything but I kind of just need to clear my mind. I need to do something without really thinking about it. So I find these sort of like you know it's, it's my form of meditation. I just put paint on, I get some different size paint brushes and I just make marks. Um, it might be just the marks from pressing on different paint brushes sizes. So you could see how I was doing that in the background. Um, or painting really, really simple shapes. I, you know, subconsciously choose the colors I'm, I, I use as well, which is really funny. Um, when I sort of go back and look at some of my pages I've done like this, you know, the days that I'm feeling fairly calm and relaxed and, and, and so on, you know, I've got my, my cool, warm, uh, my cool blue, green type colours. Days that I'm feeling a bit, you know, jumpy, <laughs> I, I use some brighter or more um, exciting colours on it. So um, even when you're not thinking about it, sometimes... Um, 
things sort of seep out anyway. So what I'm doing now is um, getting really inky and messy. I'm using some gold ink and some black drawing ink and sort of dripping it down the page sort of to get these organic shapes. So this type of artwork is inspired by the amazing Janet Skater Art on Instagram. If you go and check out her pages, she's got these beautiful mark making pages which always make me happy when I, I, I have a look at her artwork. And they're full of different marks, full of really bright colours and they're just, you know, they're just amazing. So um, I will put a link to her Instagram page in the description box below as well and I'd highly recommend you go and check her out. But that's that's where sort of my journey with with art journaling comes from. So um, I'd be interested in the comments below if um, you feel like you'd like to share what you feel about art journaling. There's just so many different reasons for doing it and I know if you follow Diary Reevee and stuff she talks about her journey as well and how she incorporates um, her mental health journey into her art journaling. Um, she uses a lot of collage and so on with again a lot of quotes to sort of sum up how she's feeling so it's it is really interesting and in how you do it um when i'm doing pages like this as i said before they're pages i don't tend to think about very much and one of the ways i get around that is um i always have something playing in the background so when i'm doing these pages i've got my ipad going and it's usually playing a TV show or something I've watched before so I don't have to concentrate on what's actually happening the, um, on screen but I can listen along and, and enjoy it that way and what I find that does for me is it allows my brain to sort of disengage so I'm concentrating on what's being spoken I'm not really concentrating on what I'm doing on the page and I suppose for me like this is something I've been doing for a long time so a lot of the marks that I'm doing the page, I'm not really having to think about all that much. They're, they're things that I've used in my artwork before. They're sort of repeated themes that I've used, so I can sort of just go and do it. This is a, a perfect example of this. I'm On this page, I'm going to basically do exactly the same I've done on the other page, except I'm using a different colour scheme. So I'm starting off with, you know, the deeper red and then blending in some... Um, lighter colors into that so I'm starting off my acrylics and blending them in uh, you'll notice I'm not changing my brush I'm not wetting my brush in between I'm using the paint that's on the brush to help blend it all together um, it's my patented <laughs> blending technique I used to paint scenery for um, musicals my local um, local community theater and uh, that's how I used to do the blending on the scenes which used to drive some of the people nuts but it worked so um, I've kept that up. So you can see I've sort of got those flowery shapes happening again but instead of drawing with ink I'm going in with a paintbrush painting sort of odd shapes um, this sort of like a bird cagey shape again not really thinking and one of my tricks again to not thinking too much about it is I've got paint left on my palette so I'm going to keep making marks on my page until I have used up all my paint. The other thing I suppose that helps when doing this is um, knowing a little bit about colour theory. So when I do backgrounds of pages, I tend to use analogous colours. Analogous colours are colours that sit together on the colour wheel and they blend together really nicely. So I knew that that fuchsia and pink and blushing and carnation were all going to blend together because they're all um, in the warm section, they all sit next to each other on the colour wheel. I knew that the turquoise was going to stand out on that page and be a bit of a focal point because turquoise is kind of opposite those colours on the, the colour wheel. That yellow, you know, while it's still very close on the colour wheel, is sort of edging toward that, towards those sort of um, lime green colours. So it's going to stand out on my page a little bit more. And you can see I'm just building up the shapes as I've done before. And I'm using my paint brushes to do it. So one thing I found when I've been painting with my kids is check out some kids' paint brushes. They're really, really cheap. Um, 
they're usually really really bad but because they're cheaply made and funny shapes and particularly if your kids have actually already used them um, previously and not looked after them you're actually going to get some really interesting shapes from them so um, have a look at your, your kids art um, brushes and see if there's any that you can sort of borrow for your studio uh, to make some really cool marks. So you can see by adding the black that suddenly just brings that page to life again and you know, I'm just using again really loose marks. I could have used a black paint pen but I really like um, it, particularly on pages like this using black ink because it's just that little bit more drippy um, you don't have quite as much control with it uh, and you know you just get some really interesting effects in the end what I didn't talk about before was the page in the middle uh, this canvas page that I cut out a shape of me and I did this for um, this is I'm trying to get the words out I took a photo of myself a side-on photo which is a little bit confronting um, but I did it so I could get a, a side profile shot of myself and I printed it out a four size and then used that to create a little bit of a stencil of my face and what I wanted it to do was to sort of echo why art journaling was important to me so I've got my face my brain what's going on in my head represented on that canvas page and I've got these crazy crazy mic making pages on either side which um, represent how I sort of deal with it. You can see finally I'm just going in with my light pens and doing some um, fine pen work over the top and again using some different colors so you know I've got those drippy white shapes but I'm going in with the pink as well just to add some extra detail to the page because again this kind of represents what's going on in my head you know it's not just one thing it's you know lots lots happening it's very busy in my brain most of the time <laughs> so even though you know I find this very relaxing it kind of is a really good representation of you know all those things you've always got something going on there's always something ticking over in your head so in these two pages I have put some um, words I've got keep going and make art I think on the other page as well and you can see how they play together with that canvas page in the middle. Um, I would encourage you if you haven't gone down the art journaling route to just have a go and um, put something on that you don't need to concentrate on get some paint out and just make some marks and see what happens and see if you're ahead you know if it helps you clear your mind regulate yourself and um, enjoy yourself and if not hopefully you'll just have fun playing with paint and getting really inky so that's my very long convoluted reasons of why I art journal I hope that resonates with some of you as well until next time bye for now